Well, I'd call it an interesting, if uh, not too convenient, coincidence. I suppose it might look that way. What are you after? That's the question. Because I find it absolutely incredible that you come searching for a long-lost relative the minute they dump a small fortune into your company. I understand your concern, Dr. Quartermain. No, 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 you're wrong. This is not concern. This is a direct accusation. I no more believe that you are Monica's cousin than I think that there are green men on the moon. Oh, Alan, you know about those little green men on the moon. Cute little buggers. Fourteen heads, thirteen you legs. Personally, Please stay out of this. If there's any doubt about my true identity, I think it's up to Monica to decide. Uh, uh Miss Sharp, uh, Lorena. Um, oh, well, all right. I apologize for all the questions. Oh, it's it's just natural concern, as 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 I expected you would have too. Well, as far as I go, uh, I really would just be grateful to know, with without any doubt whatsoever, that we were cousins. Like proof. Yeah, that would help. <laughs> Especially the nervous side of the Quartermain family. I'm cool. Monica, I can show you proof. Proof can be contrived. Alan, please let her talk. Talk is not proof. Talk is hearsay. That's just one person's word against another. Oh, would you at least listen, huh? Yes, Jimmy Lee is right. Forgive us, please. Uh, sit down, will you? Uh, can we get you anything to drink? No, thank you. I'm fine. Anybody else? Nothing for me. No, no. Maybe later. Okay, that's it. All right, then. We're ready. Let's hear it. Well, I said we were cousins. I know this because your mother was my mother's older sister. And apparently, when they were very young, just teenagers, your mother got pregnant. And because of her age and because you were illegitimate, she gave you up for adoption. How could you be certain that child was Monica? If I may be allowed to continue. Yes, please. Now, your mother was very insistent. She wanted no one to know about the baby. And naturally, my, my mother respected her wishes and, and didn't talk about you and didn't try to find you. And I, I only found out about all this just recently myself. Well, yeah, well, that still doesn't explain how you found me. Well, I started calling up all the orphanages in my mother's hometown. And when they told me about a baby with a locket that had the name Monica inscribed on it, I knew I had the right one. Oh, wait. Uh, Monica's a pretty common name. Yes, but the lockets were very unique. Lockets? You mean there, there was more than one? I have one, too. See, our, our mothers had them specially made when they were young to give to their first daughters. Let me guess. You left yours at home. No, I have mine right here. Correct me if I'm wrong, Monica, but isn't this exactly like yours? Exactly. The only difference is mine has Lorena inscribed on it. Well, uh, okay. Listen, if... If you truly are my cousin, then why... Why didn't you tell us? I mean, why did you use two different names? Well, they're both legitimate names. I just wanted to keep the two personalities separate. I have to go back to the same question. Why? For the simple reason that I didn't want to trade on our personal relationship and business. I wanted to keep the two separate so that we might become friends first. Friends first, and then business partners, and then what? Come on, Alan, the lady's got a, le a perfectly legitimate story. Just, just, can't you accept it? I think, um, we're just curious, that's curious? all. Curious? I think you'd be thrilled. I am thrilled. I, it's just this... It's a shock, I know, and it's going to take some getting used to. That is it exactly, yes. Well, I'm willing to wait. And, and if it's any comfort, it's been quite a revelation for me as well. I would say we would have a few years of catching up to do. <laughs> More than we can handle in an afternoon, certainly. I'll say. Alan, I think I'll have that drink now. By the looks of things, I think we should all have a drink. Uh, nothing for me, thank you. I'm gonna have a double. Thank you. 
Yes, this is the front desk. This is Dr. Campbell. I'm, I'm afraid I've been called suddenly to New York. I have a flight out at 8.25, but I have a meeting to attend first. Would it be possible to get someone to pick up my bags here in the room and have them sent on to the airport? That's fine. Checking out? How about if I just uh, put all of my charges onto my credit card and send them to me at my, uh, my office in England? You will. Thank you very much. Well, I've had a lovely stay. Yes, I will. Goodbye now. Once I found out the truth, I toyed with not telling you. To keep the secret as secret as was originally intended by our mothers. But why did you go to all the time and the expense and the mystery? I'm not sure. I, I suppose I felt if the situation was reversed, I'd be terribly curious about my past. Not knowing where one comes from must be put a terrible hole in, in one's spirit. I can relate to that. I don't think it's about where you came from more uh, than it is who you are. I mean, it's like having half an identity. You, you want to know. You're scared to know. But you still want to know. Yeah. It's like a mystery that takes over your life. There's another reason I decided to tell you. I can't wait to hear this one. Nothing nefarious, Alan. It, although it is something I'm not proud of. See, when I, I first began this search, my greatest fear was that I'd find out Monica was some poor pauper somewhere, and that by contacting her, I, I'd open myself up to blackmail or some other financial burden. Imagine my relief when I found out you were Quartermain. <laughs> Imagine. Well, the important thing is you took the risk. I thought you deserved to know, Monica. Despite all the suspicions to the contrary, that was my only motivation. Well, if you are my cousin, and I'm beginning to believe that you are, thank you. You've given me my past, and next to a future, I think that's probably the most important thing a person could have. True as that may be, Don't Anna. say any more, Alan. Let No, I know what you're going to say. It's not going to be very nice. Now, Miss Sharp is a guest in our house and will be treated accordingly. Uh, pardon my husband. There are times when he simply forgets all of his manners. No, no need to apologize. I, I understand Alan's disbelief. Uh, in his position, I'd feel exactly the same way. Well, I have to admit that I still haven't recovered from the shock. I know. Of course you haven't. You, you need some time to absorb it all. I'll leave you alone and, and let you think about it. Well, uh, Louina, where are you staying? Fort Charles Hotel? No. Well, I really, I, I assumed you'd, you'd well, stay here. Well, you must have assumed wrong. Well, I mean, the, the hotel is uh, way across R town. Really, I, I couldn't impose. Come on, are you kidding? They got more room than they know what to do with it. They just redecorated the East Wing. Nobody's staying up there. Please, please consider it. Well, I'll think about it, okay? Anyway, I'd like to see Jimmy Lee's handiwork. Well, then, um, I'll show you around, if, if you don't mind. Well, I don't really yes, think that... Yes, go right ahead. Absolutely, and we can all meet back here when you're through. Thank Shall we? Mm -hmm. uh, Right there, up the stairs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Did you have to shove your hospitality straight down her throat? May I remind you that Miss Sharp is just as much as relative as your illegitimate son is. Uh-huh, I was waiting. We're getting dirty. I knew it was going to come sooner or later. Well, better when she's not here than when she is. I can't believe you, Ellen. First of all, we have put a small fortune into this woman, and all you do is stand there and insult her. Weren't you listening? Yes, I was, very carefully, and I thought her story very convincing. Oh, you didn't find it the least bit coincidental? Really, you didn't? Depends on how you look at it. I'll tell you how I look at it, Monica. I find it absolutely amazing. You dump a small fortune into the company, and then all of a sudden she comes looking for her long-lost relative. I personally find that a little bit unsettling. Well, why don't we just wait and see what happens? It won't cost anybody anything. 
Unless that you really know that she is your cousin for a fact, and that's why you got us to invest in the spa in the first place. Oh, I'm not listening to you one more second. Unless it's true. True? Absolutely not. I had no idea before, and I'm still not even sure right now. Monica, there's a lot of money at stake. Alan, for once in your life, would you not think about money? What other issue was involved here? A big issue. Me and my past. That's what. If this woman is my cousin, that's very important to me. Because if she isn't, then I just go right back to being all alone in this world. You're not alone. You've got the quartermains. I just said being all alone in this world. Hey, I heard it all on the radio. You killed him, man. You killed him. Think so? You're great, I'm telling you. All right. Sales are going to jump 20% easy. See that? Even Frisco was impressed. Have a seat. So how are you feeling? The throat any better? <clears throat> you know, miraculous recovery. I'm feeling so much better, I'm going to go up to, uh, to Westchester, see an old buddy of mine, Abe Plotsky. He used to be a drummer, too. Oh, yeah. Now he's an accountant. Hell of a switch, huh? Hey, we're supposed to be spending the weekend together, remember? I even got theater tickets. Well, we'll take Blackie. He'd love to go. Yeah, take me. What we'll place? Are you sure? Another time, maybe. Hey, good work, man. Thanks, buddy. All right. I'll see you later. I'll see you both later. I don't know about you, but I think this is a big celebrational night. Uh, waiter, do you have any uh, champagne? Also, listen, uh, what do you got on the appetizer list? Uh, we're into the dinner menu now, and the special is steak tartare. Tartare? Oh, raw meat. Cool. You like raw meat? Peachy, we'll take two raw meats, please. This is great. I'm ready. How about you? For what? Dinner, silly. Remember, Grant, Celia? It's a bit early, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I suppose it is. Well, not to worry. We'll get there early and have a little drink. We can't. One little drink never hurt anybody. Grant and Celia are meeting somebody there. If we show up too early, it'll be awkward. Then we'll have a belt right here. Good idea. Have yourself a seat. I uh, <clears throat> keep this here for medicinal purposes, of course. Of course. It will be neat. Well, I don't mind it even if it's sloppy. Uh -huh. That's at least your worst joke for the year. Oh, well. My dancing is something to behold. Here's to the demise of Hannibal. But not to the demise of my career. We'll see. You keep saying that. You keep needing reminders. Aren't you proud of me, Robert? Is that why you did it? No, I did it for the excitement. But it would be nice if you could say that you were proud of me. You did very well for yourself, love. Does that surprise you? Not at all. Then why don't I get even a sense, a, a hint of enthusiasm? Maybe I'm not enthusiastic. I feel like a child being reprimanded. No. I am speaking to you as your husband. It's more than a reprimand. You're not going to forbid me to do it again, are you? You think I would? Robert, why? I don't understand you. Why? Look, it's really very simple. You are not a con artist. You're my wife, all right? And I'm the police commissioner. And I'm not going to have you mixing with con artists as the con, even if you are on the right side of the law. It's in my blood, Robert. Adventure, excitement, taking risks, following them through to the bitter end. I've been keeping it in check up until now, but now that I've had another taste of it, well, it makes me think that I can't live without it. If you take it away from me, I don't know what'll be left. I'll be left. Our life together. The children we'll one day have. Well, I want you, and I want our life together, and I want the children. That doesn't mean to say I can have something to myself, does it? Find something. But what? I don't know. That's up to you. You know where I stand. Yes, well, you certainly made that clear enough. Damn, it was fun while it lasted. The remodeling was excellent, but I especially like the decorating. Did you do it, Monica? Ah, I'd love to say I did, but unfortunately, I didn't. It was Celia. Celia? Yeah, yeah Putnam. I, I guess it's Andrews now. Used mm -hmm. to be quartermain before she got married. Yeah, she and her husband, Grant, are living in the gatehouse. Yeah, she's mm -hmm. gone pro now. <laughs> I mean, as a designer. <laughs> yeah. I don't doubt it with such exquisite taste. Look, uh, that's good, because I meant to talk to you about that. I want you two to meet. She'd do a wonderful job decorating the spa. Oh, well, the position's still open. I'll have to talk to her. Uh, getting back to a subject that's a little closer to home, have you thought any more about staying in our home? Well, give the woman a break, will you, Monica? She said she wants to stay in the hotel. Why don't I finish out my week there? 
And then come here, Monica. Wonderful. That would just be great. I'll make sure that Stella has the room ready for you. How's that for a compromise, Dr. Quartermain? I'm sure I will try not to outstay my welcome. No, I'm sure you won't. Actually, I'm looking forward to it. I've never had a, a business partner actually staying under the same roof. I think it's very convenient. That way, we can watch you. While I'm watching you. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on each other. We may become very, very good friends. Yeah. One big, happy family. Don't you have anywhere to go? As a matter of fact, I do. I'm going to go down to the gatehouse and bring Celia over here so you guys can meet, okay? I think that's a great idea. Wait a minute. On second thought, please stick around, Jimmy Lee. I think with the new dramatic turn of events, I think it really does call for a toast. So by all means, stay. Have a drink. To what are we drinking? Well, hopefully to a nice, relaxing evening with our two closest friends. Away from our problems and away from the rest of the world. Ah, sounds wonderful. Yeah, doesn't it? If we can only get this other business out of the way. He did say six, didn't he? That's what the message said, six o'clock at the Versailles room. Well, it's almost seven. Yeah, I see that. I think he would have called. Hmm. Whatever his excuse may be, it's become very obvious he's going to be a no-show. Let's hope that we get a better treatment than this from Robert and uh, Holly. They'll be here. Yeah. You, uh, you told them about our meeting, didn't you? I told them that we were having one, but not with whom. That's probably just as well. There's no reason to drag them into this. No, no reason at all. In fact, when they get here, let's just not mention it. It will just bring up the thought of the other grant again. Mm. And for one night, you'd like to just have fun and forget about it. Yes, please, if you don't mind. See, you believe me, I don't mind. Oh, here they are right now. Ah. You're right on time. Well, we waited in the car for five minutes to make sure that you were through with your meeting. Ah, which uh, you obviously are because you're alone. <laughs> the night is ours.